I'm Michelle Graves, your host on today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm glad to have you here. Now, at The Power of Money, we are interested in three things happening. First, we want you to get the necessary education so that you and your family can make the decisions that will impact positively on you in your financial life. The second thing is that you be empowered to prosper. I only want the best for you. And you can only get that if you have education and then the drive to make it happen. And the third thing that is so important to me is that you recognize that life is more than a journey and that you be energized so that you can begin to participate in the truly joyous experience of living. So, here's to empowerment, here's to education, and here's to energy. I'm Michelle Graves, your host, Power of Money, and here we go. And here we go, and what a delight it is for me to be on set again today to bring you greetings to my faithful, loyal, and devoted followers of The Power of Money with Michelle Graves. My goodness gracious, this show's been broadcasting since 1982, and specifically out of the corporate offices of DATV in Dayton uh, for the last eight years, and I'm honored to have an incredible staff of people that take care of me uh, very, very well. I, I don't know how I could make it without them. That is the absolute truth. But today, in honor of Financial Literacy Month, I have an extraordinary and exceptional gentleman as my guest for the next hour, Dr. Robert Watkins, who is an internationally known um, coach, businessman, empowerment guru, and um, a, a person I know very well for a long, long time. And he is the CEO of Conquerors Worldwide, LLC, out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, it's my understanding, based on what I've read, he's got over 17,000 men that are part of his leadership organization. And he also has some very, very, very poignant thoughts and recommendations for women which of course is, I'm a female, and that's important to me to make sure that that piece is covered as well. So without uh, further ado, we're gonna get into the meat of this interview today, which is focusing on women and wealth, women and empowerment, the changing times that we're looking at and facing today, where women are moving beyond the traditional role of nurturer, caregiver, and moving into positions of leadership and power. So um, I want to welcome Dr. Watkins by Zoom today, and uh, we're going to get started. Good morning. Good morning, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me. It's a oh no, to it's it's my it's my honor and my privilege to be able to have you as my guest. You have such a wealth of information and experience, and you just you're just an amazing guy. That's all I can tell you. you just an amazing guy. So uh, I want to start by, if you'll mind, just sharing with us a little bit about yourself for those that don't know, and uh, we'll go on into the meat of the interview. Well, thank you. You know, I haven't always been Dr. Robert Watkins. Um, I was born into an orphanage in, uh, back in the 60s uh, by a, a mother who was a teenage, um, who got pregnant, teenager, and she gave me up for uh, adoption into the um, Redwood Orphanage there in Detroit, Michigan. And, you know, back then getting pregnant and uh, being a teenager and not being married was uh, a shame. It was a, it was a, a shameful thing. Uh, but then there was uh, a woman named Mary who uh, just got married and she was barren. And back then that was equally a, a bad thing to be barren and married. And she convinced her husband, his name was Robert Watkins, to go down to that orphanage and all of, all those little black baby boys there, they chose to adopt me and bring me back to a little town called Monroe, Michigan. And uh, that man, that wonderful man who was my father, uh, gave me his name, Robert Watkins. And I uh, grew up there in Monroe and she took me to church and somehow I got through high school and went into the army and uh, somehow got out of the army, went to college here in Atlanta and went to preschool here and started a consulting company 
Um, we also have a financial company as well that um, that I've organized. And um, in the last four years, we have facilitated over thirty-seven million dollars for uh, small businesses for people to get into businesses. And majority of them are Black women. And over two hundred and fifty brand new real estate uh, investors and owners uh, came through that um, we were able to empower and finance. So now they own bed and breakfasts, restaurants, tech companies. And so it all started there with that little orphanage there. And um, so it's great. So I know a little bit about uh, black women empowerment and what their needs are. And it's majority of the brand new businesses in this country are being started by women. And it's a wonderful thing. And I'm happy to be a part of that revolution. Well, I must say that it is way overdue uh, in terms of women being able to um, step into the business world. I've been a businesswoman and a business owner for 40 years now, and it's hard to believe, but you know, it is the truth. And I know, Robert, that when I started out, I did not have mentorship, I did not have guidance. All I had was the words of my father, who was an alpha male and a very, very uh, direct man. And he said, you were never cut out to be a housewife and a secretary, Michelle, go and conquer the world. And I took him to heart. I actually believed that. Uh, it was a fact that I loved science, I loved business, I loved math, I loved um, just the whole mechanism of the world of business and finance. I, I loved it. And um, so that's where I thrive. But I must tell you that what you're doing is so far ahead of where my life experiences were, uh, where I had to uh, experience uh, being a loner, being a leader, a lot of sorrow and disappointments because, again, people didn't understand women at that time uh, doing this type of thing. So let's begin with what are your thoughts about this entire revolution with regard to women and empowerment? Yeah, and that's what it, I've defined it. It is a revolution. And there's three things that I'm seeing that is happening that women are, number one, they are redefining what wealth means to them. That wealth is not money and houses and cars and red bottom shoes and 32 inch weaves. Uh, it's not anything tangible. Wealth is being redefined as family, as vision, as a business idea. It is something that can be handed down from generation to generation. And uh, women are understanding that they have their purpose. That's how we're, they're defining wealth. And what they're doing now, number two, is building a corporation and partnerships around their what's important to them, their purpose, their idea, how they do things, how they make things, and they're making things for themselves. because. Uh, they understand that the largest block of, of investors and spenders and shoppers and buyers are women. Women buy everything. Yes, we do. <laughs> you, like, women alone have pushed the stock, the stock value of Walmart and Target and, and all these retailers uh, to, to, to Amazon to trillion dollar status. This is all being powered by women and women in business, um, Office Depot. Um, have a new report out that their sales are skyrocketing and it's because of new businesses and these new businesses are women and the second category of women that are that are profitable and powering this are black women people just like you so your daddy was exactly right and um, your daddy was telling you the truth he saw your daddy was way far ahead of, of me and everybody else and what he put in you is being manifested today and so uh, with all the struggles you went through, uh, a lot of women uh, are experiencing that as well, but they're doing it without a lot of support. And that's what makes them phenomenal. And no, no, not only that, but the new hires, uh, black women and women in, in general in business is driving down the unemployment rate. It's coming from women, not big businesses. It's coming from small businesses, people who have redefined their lives and wealth and how they do it, they're following that wealth and money and jobs and opportunity is following them. It's a beautiful thing. That is so 
incredibly encouraging and exciting because I firmly believe that the generation that is behind me and that generation behind them, uh, my grandchildren and those who are really, really clear about the world, the world system, no secrets, no games, it's all on Instagram, internet, social media, everything is out here and the opportunities to network and to group and to be encouraged are right in place where girls can begin to look at uh, women such as Kamala Harris and uh, Stacey Adams and even in Ohio, Ryan McGlynn, um, other women who have been racehorses and have run and are running this race hard to get to the end goal, which in most cases does not look like the traditional male model of a huge house, a ton of money in the bank or in the stock market, and um, miserable personal lives. I think that women aspire to have balance. They want their children, they want their relationships, and they want to be able to make this world a better place in so many dimensions. What are your thoughts on that? Well, absolutely. 42% of new businesses are, are women. Mm. And there are um, three things that women are, that I would say to the people who are out there, they say, well, I want to be a part of this revolution. I would say, number one, partner with another woman in terms of what's, what's important to you. And so when you go to Starbucks or you go shopping at the Walmart or you go to the mall or you're chit-chatting online, you know, partner with each other and talk about real estate. You know, ask the question, you know, what can we buy? Talk about uh, legacy. You know, what can we leave behind? When you talk about children, talk about, well, how can we educate them about money, about business, just like your dad did for you? You know, talk about, you know, life insurance because the number one reason why my males have gotten ahead and families have gotten ahead because someone died and the family got richer. So talk about these business things um, as, as well as uh, the future. And so partner with another woman. The second thing that we're seeing as it relates to, to business that m women are uh, should allow their money to start working for them. My advice to them is only shop in, in where you have ownership. You know, I bought uh, Bank of America shares the other day for $33 a share. Guess where I bank? I bought yeah. Delta uh, <laughs> stock for $48 a share just the other day. Guess what I'm going to be flying next week? Delta, right? And uh, I bought Exxon shares for $27 a share. Guess where I filled up my tank yesterday? So I'm, I'm driving my own value by that and putting my money to work for me as opposed to me working for the money. So I see women, you know, doing those things. And so we'll partner with another woman and put your money to work. And then thirdly, I would uh, advise is to kind of withdraw from unprofitable relationships. Oh gosh. If, if you, I don't want to get into this, but if you hang around nine broke people, you've heard me say this before, <laughs> guess if you get to one. Are you gonna right? be one? <laughs> <laughs> so I can see, I can see where you're going to be financially based on who's in your smartphone, based yes. on who's calling you and texting you and DMing you. You're not going to go beyond uh, the the financial uh, intellect and the, the success of the people who have access to your mind and your heart, and it's the people in your cell phone, right? So yes. if you're texting and DMing and, 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 and communicating with broke people all day, well, <laughs> you're pretty much going to have what, what they have. So you got to withdraw from unprofitable relationships. So partner with a woman, put your money to work and withdraw from unprofitable relationships and I think you'll be okay. You know what, that's so powerful because women get engaged in the subliminal uh, relationships. And a lot of that has been encouraged through church world because again, that is a community and uh, there are all kinds of people that come into the church, uh, some balanced, some not. And many times women get drawn in by their ability to connect emotionally. And many times that's not a good thing to do, particularly if they're not a member of your tribe. And I say that because your tribe are people that see things the way you see things in terms of filtering. And not everybody has the same experiences, therefore they don't see things the same way. 
and you can find yourself pouring into people that do not have the capacity on any level, Dr. Watkins, of giving you anything back. They don't have it. So what is your recommendation for that when you talk about uh, detoxifying is what I would define it as? What, what, how does that happen? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, I wrote a book called Never Chase a Paycheck Again, and I deal with uh, the subject of emotional spending, and it comes from being an emotional person. So we make decisions based on emotions. Fight money in business is not emotional. And so emotions are anger and happiness and joy and peace. You know, we, and so we're, if, when you're making decisions when things are great and making decisions when things are bad, don't make decisions like that. And so, you know, that's why window shopping is not healthy. I and told you. I having a that. friend who's addicted to shopping is not healthy. Having a friend addicted to drugs is just is the same thing. It's, it's not healthy. So we, number one, we have to develop good financial habits. By that I mean, you gotta discipline yourself to, to save, but not just to save for the sake of saving. No, we have to have an intention about it. We need to save to invest. And so you have to define your seed, define your life. I define my life as a real estate investor, right? The reason why I own commercial real estate, downtown Atlanta, because I set it as a goal. And so now it took me 10 years to save money, enough <laughs> money as a down payment, right? But I'm saving to invest. Now, if I'm just saving to save, I probably would have spent the money. Right. I would have bought shoes, I would have bought, you know, I would have found a reason to buy a new car. But no, no, I'm saving to invest. And that's, that's number one. That's not emotional. That's a very intellectual, disconscious decision. The second thing that I'm doing is establishing seven streams of income. That is a biblical. Yes, it is. Mandate. In Ecclesiastes 11 and 2, and you've seen this many times before, where Solomon says to invest in seven, yes, eight ventures, where you don't know what evil may come upon the land. Well, the pandemic is upon the land, the financial insecurity is upon the land, unemployment rate is high. I mean, there's a lot of negative things on the land, but it doesn't touch the person who has seven streams of income. So if someone crazy ends up in the White House and ruins the market, it's not going to affect me because I have seven different streams of income. And I talk about that in the book. And so, you know, invest to, to save to invest, develop so, several multiple streams of income. And um, those two things alone will help them stay afloat as long as you don't get emotional. Emotional spending will ruin that plan in a hurry. You're absolutely right. I think, I think a lot of the challenges, again, that women are confronted with have to deal with the inability to uh, tap down that emotion and begin to be intentional about what they want to do. And the other thing I might add, just as a thought, is the role of the family. And that is that many times families have definite opinions about what we need to be doing. And, and it's amazing to me that so many people in the family have not been able to achieve any measure of financial success or independence, yet when they see you trying to birth uh, a business or birth a concept that can evolve into a business, the level of resistance that uh, can burp up from just, it's just unbelievable within the family, which is why are you doing that? Uh, do you have the money to do that? What? Who told you that? And well, all of that said. can be yeah. so painful. What are your thoughts? Well, if you, you know, well, the Wall Street Journal did a, um, a study some time ago because where you get your information determines where you end up in life. And they did a study on why there was so much poverty within the black community and why so much poverty in churches, in black churches. And what they discovered, and they did a research on where do these people get their information mm. about money, success, time, how they use their time, investment, and overwhelmingly, majority of them got their information from their church. Mm. And then they, had, then they acknowledged, well, okay, what type of life skills is this institution providing Ray Ray and Pookie them, right? Right, right, right. And uh, very little. It was is very little information, useful information that that was generational, 
that was practical, that was useful, uh, and almost nothing about money. Although there is 2,350 verses in the Bible, as you know, on the subject of money and business, more than just tithing. And so when they did hear about money and life skills in their in the place where they were getting their information, uh, it was it was not something that could be passed on. It was not wealth. So where we get our information is absolutely key. That's why the power of money, this program is so dynamic. And it's why you are such a gift uh, to the earth and you are such a gift to all communities and, and having guys like me on uh, because you care, because where we get our information determines where we are right, right now in life. So we can't blame anyone. We can't blame another gender, another race, uh, political party. We can't blame God. We can't blame the devil because <laughs> where we get our information is, is it determines where we are in life right now. So we got what we have been taught. So we got to be taught again. That's why when I taught uh, school at Emory University, um, and unfortunately, it was people who already had money. I'm right. Like, Where the people who don't have money? Where are they? Right. I'm here to tell them. You remember when I came to Cincinnati some time ago and a little bit of church there? Yes. And uh, Pastor Blue, praise God. Yes. You Wonderful came up man. there on a Saturday. I remember that. Right. And uh, I taught for an entire Saturday afternoon, I think it was. Yes. And you sat there as one of the most successful people in the city. You sat there, and I'm like, well, where are the people? Where are, the where are the people who really need the information? Where are they? They were out doing other things. Right. But then there's people like you who understand, I need to study to show myself approved. I need to get some more information because it's not going to be my season if I'm still relying upon what I was taught 20 years ago. And, so. that's a, and, and I'll tell you, Dr. Watkins, that is a real ongoing concern of mine because I do a radio show on Mondays and um, that is internet as well as regular commercial radio, Christian radio. And the biggest issue is that people are torn around this issue of money. And, and again, I, I share this because the church, and I'm not gonna berate the church because I am a Christian, but I'm going to say that the leadership in the church that has been traditional male, something has to give because all your members are females with children and many of them unattached and they can only experience permanent success when they have the information and then they have the knowledge to execute what they have. And if they cannot get that within the traditional presentation that, that they're given, which is I go to church, I listen to the, word, the, the, the preacher, and then I'm out here again at $15 an hour. That's not a formula that works. It's not a formula I wanna pass on to my children, and they better not pass it on to their grandchildren because it cannot work. How do you see the possibility of having um, alternative resources and have you tried that yourself for this situation absolutely uh, that's why within my company conquer worldwide i serve as a personal mentor uh, to thousands of mm. entrepreneurs and uh, a lot of women as well and my company conquer consulting uh, i have 11 people on staff two lawyers have three consultants uh, PR person, social media director, um, an administrator, and they're all called to, to do exactly what you just said. We mentor people, we, we get rid of all that trash in their, in their minds, like, like God's going to pay off their bills. God never promised to pay off your bills. He promised you the blessing, and you have to go and do something with that. And he said that blessing will make you rich and add no sorrow to it, which means you have to do something. Uh, to get there. So that's that in between time is kind of where we serve. And, and and not only that, once they go through our three month program, if they want to be in business, if they've been called to be in business, that's why we have a financial company say, okay, now you can handle it. Because if we gave you this $80,000 without having the right mindset, it will kill you. And now, yeah. you know, it, yeah. you, you go out and you, you use it in, in unfaithful ways, untrustworthy ways. Uh, so 
we have to make sure we deal with the mindset first. And that comes, I know you've had some great coaches. I've had some great coaches in my, in my life. There's no way I could have crawled out of that orphanage without someone taking right. me by the hand and showing me where to go, which means now I've got to now challenge my, the, the beliefs that I held for so long. That success is just going to show up. Remember Ed McMahon? And he would come knock on the door and just yeah, give you five the money. million dollars. That's, the that's money. what I was hoping for. Yeah. I was hoping that the lottery in Michigan, where I grew up, lottery is, is legal there. And and I was hoping if I just scratched in the right place, right. that I would get a million dollars. Eureka! That was, was going to happen. It Eureka! Never it never happened. It never, no. really never happened. You know why? Because I wasn't doing my part. Right. And I didn't know. So I needed someone to take me by the hand and show me the right way. And then what happened when I was in motion, then God was send people like you. You came to my office years ago yep. and you confirmed my, the status that I operated. Now you said I was going to bring in millions. You said I was going to own real estate. You said great things were going to happen in my personal life. And so, but God confirmed what I was working on. But if right. I wasn't in motion, there's, then he couldn't have sent someone wonderful like you into my life to serve as an example uh, of, of what money can do, not just for me, but for other people. Well, money, so, cure, yeah. money answereth all things. That's right. And so, uh, we don't worship money because it's, it's a currency. It flows. But I will say, and I was blessed to have on my radio show yesterday, uh, treasurer Charlie Winburn, who oh, we nice. both admire, uh, mainly because Charlie uh, came out of a, a similar situation. Yeah, he's um, a foster child, right? Oh, uh, he, his mother, yeah, he's a foster child. His mother, which he's very open about, his mother died uh, from an abortion. And he wound up literally throwing himself to the mercies of the court at a very young age. And, and his story of success is quite powerful. And, 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 but yet he talks about the power of attraction, that you have to be willing to step outside of the norm and begin to really see what God's intentions are for you as a human being. Uh, awesome, awesome testimony of his rise to success. And at 70 years old, um, I, I'm, I, it's hard to believe it, but then I'm 69, I'll be 70 myself. I'm not a spring chicken either, but we, it's like, how did this happen? And again, I absolutely believe that you've got to have mentors. You've got to have people that are in your corner and that will not allow you to fall back into the syndrome of repetition which is you repeat what you know, and that repetition has to be severed so that you can begin to sprout your wings and go to the dimensions of God that you've never even thought about. What are your thoughts? Exactly. Well, that's, you know, Charlie Winburn is definitely uh, an example. You're an example. I'm, I'm working on being an example. And you are an God example now. <laughs> you're, you're well, <laughs> okay well we we you know god is the he's the father of all success in yes he is and there was one point in my life i believe that god wanted me to be poor there was one point in my life i thought god i was cursed i was mm -hmm. destined to poverty i was destined a lot of people didn't make it out of that orphan orphanage right I, I, the only difference between me and them is that i believe something a little bit different i believe that god uh, could do something in my life, and but if you didn't, ha if you had an orphan mindset, is what I call it, you'll end up in prison, like a lot of like a lot of guys did. They, you'll end up uh, in a gang. You end up dying of some disease or uh, of a gunshot or something of that nature. And the only difference between me and them was my mindset. Right. And the mindset was that I got to do something different. I got to create something. I've got to bring value to the world. And here's the thing that I would say, two things I would say to your viewers, uh, those who are trying to change, those who are trying to become like Michelle Graves, number one, never stay where you're not valued. You oh my gosh. Before. Never stay in a relationship, never stay on the job, never stay anywhere where you're not being valued. 
And so if you're in a relationship where you're being, where you're not being valued, it's because you don't know your value. So people who understand their value, it's very easy for me to make decisions today. It's very easy for why I'm on this program with you, because someone, Michelle Grace, valued something that I had to say. And so, but, uh, but well, real wealth builders and, and people with influence, they never stay in anything when they're not being valued. That's number one. And then number two, what you have to do to, to experience that transformation is go back to what God originally called you to do. Because we all get distracted. Lord knows I got distracted. As you know, I went through a divorce and it's because I got distracted and I take full responsibility for that. And God could not do anything in my life until I take responsibility for my actions and say, you know what? I messed up. I was yeah. unfocused. I was out trying to save the world. I was never home. Of course, she felt neglected. Of course, she was trying to get my attention. But I had to say, as a man, as someone who wants to, whose life needed to change, or I was going to go in the gutter, I have to take responsibility. Yes. So those three things. Never stay where you're not valued. Go back to what God's called you to do and take responsibility for your life and start making the tough, unemotional decisions to put your life on the right track. And that could be giving Conquer Worldwide or giving you a call and saying, listen, I need help. Come help me. Well, I tell you, I would encourage them to call you um, simply because at this point in my life, I am resetting the button again. <laughs> hey, call, me. Don't, call him, don't call me, right? Yeah, yeah, no, they can call you. Give them your phone number real quick. Okay, it's 888-526-1118, 888-526-1118. Feel free to call us. We'll be happy to talk to you and get you some resources. Well, I think it's important that, that um, viewers, that you do take advantage of uh, what he brings to the table uh, in terms of leadership, experience, and knowledge. And again, information. His network is vast. And sorry, you, you, can't, you can't go this journey by yourself. Uh, you need to have members of your tribe that are committed to your success, genuine success. Do not uh, disdain you, do not have contempt for you. Um, you, you. You don't even want that in your circle. And I must be frank with you, Robert, it's taken me more than a minute to get rid of people that <laughs> were well-intentioned, yeah. but were busily digging the hole in the grave to put me in it because they couldn't see what God had given me a vision to do. And therefore, it was always a, a problem. It was always a distraction or this or that. And um, I finally said, I'm done. And I retreated. I, when I say I retreated, I pulled back. After I saw you the last time I saw you, I pulled back. And I said, I'm done. You know, I am done with this. And I'm going to take control of this. And I am going to come out of this. And I'm going to go forward with the intentionality uh, of fulfilling what God has called me to do. And so that's moving right along. It's not without bumps. But I will share with everybody listening that if you don't own your stuff and then make a decision that I am going to move forward and change, you're going to be stuck. Is that true? It's very true. You know, we, we get in life not based on what we deserve because god is merciful we get in life on the decisions that we make and that's a hard that's a hard thing to swallow when yes. life hurts. when 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 you're being abused or when someone's taking advantage of you and i'm not saying that you should blame yourself but the great thing for you if you find yourself in where you're not being valued you've got to make a decision that's why emotions will keep you there oh my gosh you, yes the, they the will Fear will keep you there. Yes, fear. fear. You can you can stop right there. Fear. Okay. Fear. Fear will keep you stuck. Stuck. Paralyzed. Paralyzed. Yeah. Uh, Paralyzed. Un unwilling to move. It will keep right. you in bed. It, it'll it'll make you crawl up and, and ball and, and 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 it'll it'll keep you there. And and the abuser seizes that and will keep you in fear. And, and fear, that's why 
God was very clear when he said, I am not the author of fear. I didn't give you a spirit of fear. I'm on the other side of this. And so the question is, and this is men and women, how do I get out of fear? Right. And that's the thing, that the fear of the unknown. Even God took away the, the fear of death. He said, death, where's your sting? Right. right? He, right. He took fear, he's trying to take fear away from us, all the unknowns. And I'm so proud of you to say, listen, I got to take back my life. And the great thing for you, I'm sure you relied upon something your father told you when you were a little girl. And that stuck with you. Yes. So when you got into fear, that's why you got to, something's got to come back to your remembrance. You say, you know what? I got to come back to myself. I am Michelle Graves. I am the daughter of a great father. I, I have a master's degree. I am a world-renowned financial expert. I have a television show, The Power of Money. You got to put yourself in remembrance. Right. Like David did. And that's what I'm telling the viewers is that those who are going through a difficult time and social media can can make a lot of people depressed. Oh, my gosh. The other people. <laughs> They're comparing themselves Stop doing that. That's the first thing to do to get out of out of fear. Stop comparing yourself. Right. And particularly when most of the comparatives are lies. They're lies. Because you have no way of validating or credentialing many of your social friends. Uh, they're, they, they're great actors, but, and, and a lot of the stuff I laugh and enjoy, but I don't take it seriously. I was amazed at the number of people that do take it seriously, Robert. Yes. They yeah. do, they believe that stuff and it depresses them. And uh, again, I tell them what God has for you is for you. It's for you. It's not for anybody else. It's for you. And you have to take the bull by the horn and you got to go. You got to say no to the negatives. Embrace the positives. Be open to the learning because I'm hesitant at this point in my career to give a lot of advice because we, one of the things with social network is people think they know everything. They do. They said, well, you know, what can you tell me? And I said, wisdom can tell you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> At least I know what not to do, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you really have got to know. To <laughs> <laughs> wisdom will tell you a lot. So yeah. sit down and listen a little bit. So, uh, but anyway, that's my, my, my thoughts on it. I've seen a lot, as I know you have as well. And so are there any... Um, when you talk about a woman, she says, okay, I got it. I got it. I, I don't want to continue with this $15 an hour job, or I don't want to continue with this conversation of going nowhere. And, and it just looks like I can't get out of this ditch. When you have those conversations, and I know you do, do. then how do you take them out of that thought process? Well, we got to start where they are. Okay. okay. Um, once they have the right mindset that there's no Superman, no super daddy that's going to come and pour a million dollars at your feet. Once they get over that dream. Yes. Okay. We got to get over that dream. Sometimes that takes a little time. <laughs> once we get over that, let's look at the reality. Let's start opening up your bills. Let's start looking at your credit score. Let's get into some reality. Let's look into some documents. And the first thing I would say, once they get into the reality, there's no more emotions. You have a, you have, you make $15 an hour. You have a 550 credit score. There's no Superman, no bank coming to give you a, a bunch of money. God is not here to pay off your bills. What do we do? The first right. thing I would suggest is to use my 10, 10, 10 strategy. Save 10%, invest 10%, and give 10%. Let's get into a habit of saving, get into a habit of giving, and get into a habit of investing. You can do that with a hundred dollars. I don't care what you have at the end of the month. It may be fifty dollars. I guarantee if you do that in four months, you're going to be at a different level financially. You're going to have more money in your savings account. You now so your so your 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 president is going to be happy. You now you can take you know twenty dollars and invest into something. Now you got putting your money to work. Now your future is going to be happy, and now you're giving to God or to charity, now your heart and your health is going to be happy because God loves a cheerful giver. 
And it is it is scientific proof that those who give receive. It is a spiritual principle. And so the 10, 10, 10 strategy, it works. I still do it today. Now, someone who's listening may say, well, I don't have 30%. Then your life is too expensive. The second right. thing you have to do is now st stay away from Starbucks for the rest of the year. You know, downgrade your apartment from where you are to something that you that can be affordable. We got to relieve some pressure. And so once you determine, okay, I need to put the car in reverse. I have a driveway. I have to put the car in reverse to come out of my driveway. And then I can go forward. But I got to put it in drive and in, in, in reverse. It's okay. I'm not embarrassed about going in reverse for a few months. It's temporary. And so that 10, 10, 10 strategy, it works. I am and so happy to hear you say that. Later and say, thank you so much. Yes. Things are great. You have just uh, given me an insight for myself even um, mm -hmm. about going into reverse because sometimes you say to yourself, geez, why is this happening and why do I have to do this? And the reality oh, yeah. is <laughs> that you go into reverse to develop the character to go forward because something, something didn't connect. A piece of that greatness that is going to project you is missing and the reverse is probably necessary for you to develop the discipline and the focus and the intentionality to go forward. It can be painful going reversal, uh, going into reverse though, Dr. Watkins. It, it is. I remember my very first job, uh, first investment, by, by the way, long story short, we lost a lot of money and I was the, the leader. Okay. And, um, I was, I stayed in bed for Gosh, too much. I believe it. It's one thing to lose your money. It's another thing to lose someone else's yes. money. Yes. There were no lawsuits. There was nothing of that nature. It's just the mere fact that the money was lost. Right. And I was depressed. But here's what got me out of my depression. And I remember the Lord came to me and he said, I didn't tell you to do that in the first place. Ooh. <laughs> and it, my, my ambition to to be successful and make a great name and make a lot of money was all wrong. And so what God had to do in my character, you mentioned character, my life focus now has become, what can I do for other people first? What advantage can I give Michelle first? What advantage can I give my client first? Let me help you first. Let, I had to take on the attitude of a servant. And once I understood that, the quality of my life got better. I believe it. But my mindset got better. And guess what? More money started coming in because I was putting other people's needs ahead of my own selfish needs. Right. And those people eventually go broke. Well, I tell you comes, that what that, comes after selfishness is lust. I tell you what you're sharing is so, so incredible. And I appreciate and respect and honor your transparency because people don't hear this. Okay. They look at us and they make assumptions. And I tell them, oh my gosh, you are so wrong. I don't look like my story. I don't, I don't look like what I've been through, right? I, I, my head, if you could see through spiritual eyes, you would see that I am technically headless <laughs> and do not have it together at all. It's a day by day uh, uh, experience, but I will definitely agree with you on, on that whole thing about being a servant, which uh, has not been a challenge for me. I, I've, I've been a servant, but again, what happens is you have to be sensitive to who you're serving because not everybody is going to be respectful of the price you have to pay to give service. They don't understand because they are selfish. So I think we have to lean on and trust at all times God in terms of the direction and the focus and who we are to serve. Because yeah. again, a lot of people, I'm just saying from my experience, a lot of people have uh, taken the information and they have used it to um, improve the quality of their lives, but they have not uh, passed it forward. They have not tried to help other people. And, and that is counterintuitive, but you, you cannot hold on to it. You got to let it go. That's true. 
And a mentor told me a while, uh, gosh, years ago, I never forgot it. He said, the quality of your life is based on how well you serve others. Yes. And that applies in business, it applies personally, it applies in marriage, it it, it applies everywhere. So if you're complaining about the quality, uh, I remember complaining about the quality of my marriage. Well, it's because I wasn't serving it. I remember complaining about the quality of of the clients that we had. Well, because I wasn't serving them. Mm -hmm. I was complaining about the quality of, of my life. And so you have the power to increase the value and the quality of your life and it's based on how well you serve others. The principle Jesus gave us. And uh, those big companies that major in customer service, that do it better than the competitors, they win. I totally they agree. Win. I've and seen it. I've, I've seen it. I have so seen it. So as we are moving forward, because it's now 2021 and we're approaching mid-year, yeah. which means the year will be over, um, <laughs> what do you see as opportunities emerging from this pandemic that will make um, a significant change in how we relate to one another, uh, how our businesses will be empowered to prosper. What do you see? Yeah, I, I see the rest of the year being a boom. I, I see, wow. I really do. I see there's a lot of pent up money. Uh, stimulus checks are still going out from the $1.3 trillion. All that money has not been spent yet. Okay, it hasn't been distributed and spent. That money's coming this summer. Where is that money going? It's going into restaurants, it's going into travel, it's going into hotels, it's going into family things. One of the great resets <clears throat> that this company has is the reestablishment of family. There are oh. some families that have not spoken together. They were forced to stay in the house together and deal with each other. That was great. Some people don't want to go back to work. Some people, a lot of women, they're just starting business. Families are starting businesses. So I think the greatest opportunity is in entrepreneurship. It is you starting something, something of value, uh, something that can be delivered. It, can, it could be cakes. It could be, uh, you know, it, it could be, you know, cupcakes. It could be anything that, that people are buying everything. They are. Seven billion people are online spending money. And yes. it is a fact that seven billion dollars a day a day every day is being spent online so what are people looking for they're looking for information that's why my books uh, I sell out I can't keep them people are looking for information right they read more um, my seminars my online zoom calls everything is so anything so things inform anything that is educating empowering um, and then anything that's involved with travel I think presents the greatest opportunities. That's why people's blogs and and social media is is blowing up because people are online looking to connect and they're spending money at the same time. So somehow you can transition what you know into a valuable commodity that you can sell online, you're gonna make a lot of money. Well, I know you're right because one of the things that I had gotten really kind of uh a lackadaisical about was um, one of my companies, which was Shayology Organics, which is shea butter from my uh, experiences uh, in West Africa as a biochemist and also as a financier. And I just kind of let it in, eh. but the reality is that it works. And I just didn't work it. I just yeah. didn't work it. When I say it didn't work it, I, my age, I have no wrinkles, nothing. My grandchildren have nothing, and the dogs have nothing. And uh, I finally just said, you know what? Seven billion dollars is a lot of money going out here. Every day. Every day. Every and day. And what are you doing? And so I'm resetting that as we speak. I'm, I'm resetting it and excited about being able to do that. Um, I had gotten myself locked in, truthfully, uh, Robert, with this mindset. Oh, I, that, that's so different from my uh, generally perceived reputation. But the reality is that I'm bringing value and I should have been on it. And now I'm on it. I, like I tell folks, own it. I should have been on it. I'm on it. <laughs> I'm well, on it now. You know, when we talk, we just came out of Women's Month and we we're talking about financial literacy. Yes. I mean, you're in the beauty industry. I, I know. Okay, so the beauty industry is king and queen. Okay? <laughs> I know. 
And you know who propels the beauty industry? Black women. Yes. It's not, white women, it's not Asian women. It's black women. Yes. It's number one. Every major makeup company, every major a fashion company now have a black women strategy. Okay. They so better. Butter, they better. What are you doing? Let's go. You should be on Facebook right now talking about, hey, do I look great? You can look like me. Try this. <laughs> Try yeah. this. It'll take 10 minutes to create your website. That's all we need. All right. I, Let's go do it. I'm, that's so amazing. But well, listen, we are wrapping up our time uh, is, is coming to a quick end. I want to get your, give your phone number out again. 888-526-1118. Conquerworldwide.com is uh, our website. And I'm and, online at Robert J. Watkins. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, everywhere. Yeah, you're, you're everywhere. I'm <laughs> so serious. I am so proud and honored that you consented and had took time out to come on to the show and to be able to share with our many, many listeners and viewers uh, about the show. For those of you that are listening in, please encourage your family to go on to YouTube uh, in the markets that we, dis we air. Make sure you listen in. This is an amazing show. Uh, and again, Dr. Watkins brings the richness of experience the richness of networking, the richness of life as a man of God, as well as a successful business person. So I want to thank everyone who joined us today on The Power of Money with Michelle Graves. And again, I send you blessings. I send you great love and I send you prosperity that God has promised. You take care. See you soon. Bye bye.